Well, here we are, fishy. To, I guess you would call it the eastern end of the Solent, there is the famous Nabba Tower, which most people will know who boat fish the eastern white, and it's near the shipping channel. And here you can see these ships come exceedingly close to you at times. We're at anchor there, fishing for whatever. And this boat has a huge amount of containers in there. Who knows what is in there? Whatever it is, it's going to another country. It's coming out of England and going to another country. Anyway, always got to be careful out there with the fog being around as well. We're aboard this boat trying to catch some fish for the inaugural trip of um, Valletta. This boat, the Garmin 840. Let's see if we can catch something. Uh, this is a bait box here, guys, with some stuff in. And now this here, this is another bait box. It's supplied here. Supplied by the establishment. I don't know whether to go for. He wants one. Look, he wants one. A mackerel. He wants one. <laughs> Dogs after oh. that. I think he likes those. Yeah. Do I go for that one, or that one, or that one? Oh, okay. I'm just going to bait up with this one, people. And stations aboard the boat. The first fish of the inaugural fishing trip aboard this boat. I mean. There's plenty of space, it's a walk around boat, you can go anywhere around it, it's loads and loads of space. And first fish of all, this is a ray, that's a nice ray. And, you know, hopefully we follow up with other fish. Just hooked in the jaw there, looks like squid bait was used there. And like a lot of fish, it goes back. Here in the UK, I think our sea anglers put back quite a lot of fish. Here's a good eating fish. They make a lot of fish cakes out of these, they tell me. Pouty. And that's quite a big pouty in that one. But also, the conger eat these. If you have one about half that size, it would be absolutely ideal conger bait. So don't neglect it, guys. If you're getting pestered by pouting, don't be afraid to put a bait down on the bottom for conger. And it was conger I had in my mind. I was using some mackerel heads left over from one of Mike's beach fishing trips where we filleted the fish and just left the mackerel heads. I said, I'll take those straight off you, matey. And that's the sort of fish you catch. Again, conger eels. They tell me this year off the south coast there are loads of conger eels. Apparently they migrate across the open ground, um, you know, during the winter months. And so it proved. Gary here, who actually built this superb fishing vessel, is locked and loaded on another fish. And this one, again, look, see, small conger eel, but they are there in numbers. Some of these conger eels actually off the coast there, up on the eastern white area, some of the quite big ones, some of the over 40 pounds. This one's not, obviously, but we were pleased to catch it, nevertheless. Basically, good service on this boat, as you can see, look, in the oven. Bacon sandwiches on the way. Hey, you could do anything in there, couldn't you? You could anything. bake hot pies, pies yeah. put pies in there's a treat. Yeah. Pies would do that, yeah. They're already queuing up. What a place. Got to keep it clean. Got to keep it clean. It's a brand new boat. Brand new bacon sandwiches as well. Look at the rod holders along the side. I love it. I thought I've got enough rod holders aboard High Sea Drifter. This boat's got even more. And of course, it does in fact keep the decks clear. That's what it's about. Now, here's a tip, guys. You're dropping down your bait to the seabed. Watch, I'm going down slowly. Don't let it go down too fast. Watch the rod top. You've got to concentrate on the rod top. It's down, lift it, drop it. Watch the rod top. Bump. That's the seabed. Again, watch. Bump. That for beginners should show you on the seabed. You lift it, let a bit of line off, drop it back until you're happy. Put the lever drag or the gear, boating gear, baiting gear. Well, why not put the reeling gear ground? Light drag in case it gets pulled over the side and then you just wait. Even if the tide is very strong, make sure you lift and bump and fill that seabed. You will not catch anything at all with the bait flying up in the air. Here comes, yes, another ray. I think this was a thorn back. Decent size one, so we've had uh, we'll put the other one down as a blonde. Look at the thorns on the belly, yeah, the big wow, it's about six seven pound, maybe a little bit more. That's a female, is it? Yeah, they call him 
Good morning. He's going to be going in the tide. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. He's flapping. Conga? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that's a, that's a good fish. Bring yours up. Oh, 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 oh. Congo, I reckon that is. Yeah, it looks like Congo. Get him off the bottom. Small look, Gary. Uh, double squid. Double squid, so yeah, good bait, yeah. Six, six double hooks. Well, so fingers crossed you get this one. What sort of bite was that, Gary? Yeah? Good bite, just, um, or just straight over? No, a couple of some small taps. Just taps, really. And I just find it. I hold the rod to see what it see is. How it progresses, and then all of a sudden, it's boom. It's not a cod. It doesn't feel like a cod. Yeah, it's, it's got to be an eel the way it's come up further out now. Yeah. Planed up. Taking the weights off. Yeah, that's yeah, that twanging, there. twanging's a conga like that normally. I can see the, the knee, there he is, there he is, I've seen him. Oh, he's be, yeah, conga, yeah. There he is, there he is. Yeah. Oh, sorry, there's like, whoa! He's <laughs> yeah, only, only a light rod. Yeah, he's a biggie. He's not a bad one, is he? Not happy. Uh, there is actually in the top of there. What do you want? No, 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 yeah, watch your, watch your weight down, come off in a ping. Yeah. I'm going to let the line off. Just guys just coming in here there he is that's him all on squid those guys yes yeah on squid <laughs> six well, o seven, six, six o hook on that one several squid by the look of it yeah That'd be alright for the cats, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are eating size, those two on the left. It's costing her a fortune in feeding him. This size boat, I don't really bother the boat, but it's going to get mucky, it's going to get rough, and whether we knew it was coming in. But uh, thanks for watching the show, we caught quite a few fish here. Have you seen? This is the maiden voyage of the Valletta. And it's not bad when you have a brand new boat, brand spanking new in the water, you come out, you just anchor up. Right by the nap tower, no big secret, just regular ground. And um, we've had what four, five, six different species, so pretty good. And do you know what? I love it because I can go out here and it's raining. And in here, it's lovely and dry and warm. I can't afford one, but I do like it. It's pitching us up and down a little bit, but then you know everybody else has gone home. So we're going to pull the pin, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Let's get back in that tackle trip where it's nice and warm. Let's see what that guy has to say. Good trip.
Well, at least I'm here in the tackle shack. It's not raining, but it's cold outside. Not freezing, but it's cold, cold. Just about one degree, I think it is just about. It was two below this morning, it's up to about one above now. So, that was a really good bit of fishing. I quite enjoyed that, did quite enjoy that. I certainly enjoyed a ride on the boat. Oh boy, is it fast. I'm down here in the tackle shack where I said I would be. Um, fire's going, the old G stove's a roaring, the temperature is creeping up. I'm gonna have, I think I'll have, I've got some soup here, carrot and coriander, and the wife's left me cheese and tomato rolls. How lovely. A couple of things I wanna run past you guys, but first, I've been working outside. It's been a horror story of jobs. I've got a cracked, yeah, brain, I know. Fish pond there, got three fish ponds I dug with liners. And the deer have been getting in there, foxes, who knows, badgers, mounted lions, wildebeest, whatever. It's shafted, it's got a hole in the bottom and I'm not prepared to put any more money into it. So, this is what I'm gonna to do to it. Check it out while the fire gets warmed up in here. Well, here we are, guys. At least the sun is trying to break through this fog. Bit of a strange one today. I'm down at the tackle shack. You might ask yourself why there are waders involved and it's sub-zero temperature. I've been waiting about two hours for it all to clear. Now, I've got three fish ponds here, where we are. One of them was dug out, was very, very, I call it shallow gonna show you. So this one, as you can see, we did all this last, last year to salvage. I've got all these are transplanted and they're plants that have been cut in half and split and cut in half and split and propagated. And that's a willow tree there. You can see, this is not caused by a drought. We have had plenty of rain. What happens is, if I show you down there, see all those tear marks? That's where we get deer jumping over from the fields here. And even though I've got this special deer fence here, I'll show you there, they call this like a, a game fence. Even though I've got this, it has big squares and then graduates down, 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 down there. Move that. So you can see smaller ones there, allegedly to keep, say, small game out. But unfortunately, when you get deer, they come from over the trees, the forest bits over there. They're going to clear this and they get here. So the ponds I've got, this is the one I made a mistake of having a shallow there. I thought, oh, I'll put shallow so lilies will grow there. So the deer and other creatures, one seems foxes, get in there for uh, uh, water, and then they scrabble to get out, and they, you know, they, they split, split the liner. You can see that is leaking. So that's had it. That would cost me hundreds of pounds to replace this liner. I'm gonna go around with a standing knife, which in America is a box cutter, split all this plastic out and I'm going to dump all these leaves of which there is a considerable number when we do a rake up it's done by the ton literally we have several tons of leaves put them in heaps it's taken us a day or two to get this far and I'm going to put those into here transplant my lilies and yellow water iris into my big pond over here show you what we're doing let's all go here all pampas grasses are transplanted. This is a deep sided one, so we don't get quite the same problem here. They like the shallow side. So I'm going to dump my lilies in here. You can see it's deeper, they like it. If this goes any lower, it's going to dry out, and I don't think there's anything in there except pretty well sludge. I'm going to see if I can bucket some of it out, and then I can cut the liner out, and then I encompass the wife's help, and we'll get rid of 120 heaps of leaves into here gradually build it up, build it up with grass cuttings, and then I can um, import some topsoil, fill it out and make a garden feature of it because it is a pond that does not get use. The pond of no use, I'm calling it. So, it's waders on, guys. Yeah, 
Okay, this is why I'm not the brightest tool in the box at school. I'm thinking to take the liner out. I'm going to cut the liner. I'm going to use that as a weed blind in various other places. It'd be a really good weed blind. It's too brittle to use again. Been down here 13 years, so it's lasted pretty well. You actually see the claw marks where creatures, probably wildcats or something, have been clawing lynx, cougars, that sort of thing, clawing their way up here after they get water. So I'm thinking, why am I bucketing this out? Once I slash all this and get all this liner out, it's on soil, it's going to go down anyway. So if I can majorly get these two plants out, the lilies and the iris, I figure if I get the liner out and cut it, it will drain naturally. I can then engage the surfaces of the wife and we'll start filling it up with about three or four tonnes of leaves. We've got a lot of trees on our property and if you get trees on the grass then you get them damp in the winter and you get a lot of moss hey-ho, you know what gardens are like, they're non-stop, they're like fishing really, it's sort of non-stop. So that's what I'm going to do. Temperatures must have dropped about four or five degrees with this fog coming in here. You can see hazy through the through the uh, fog there. Now what I have done, I managed to chop in half the lilies here, all the lilies, all going to shoot. Look, but they need all this weed, this grass cutting out for them. They really want cutting back. A lot of this, you tend to put it in, think it's going to be good, but it's got to be the right size for the pond. So I'm going to take these and dump them in my other pond and then they'll hopefully shoot up for next year that's a theory well it's not a theory I've done it before there's quite a few lilies I've managed to salvage there and they're not going to do any good in here at all So, you know what they're saying is, people, another day, another dollar. No, not when you're retired. There's no more dollars, is there? It's just another day and more work. Anyway, good job done. I've still got a lot of leaves to get in there. But listen, I want to run a couple of things past you. I'm just going to put some food on here because the temperature's cranking up. It's warming up nicely. Probably looks like it wants a bit of paint on the ceiling. Again. It can get damp and cold in there. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get this soup on the go, and then I can sit down and have a chat with you.
Well, Din Din's is done. That was good. And the heat's still coming off that stove. Brilliant piece of kit. Anyway, a couple of things just before we go. Uh, another angler actually gave me and said, try these, Grahams. Now, I'm not one for gizmos. I'm not one for gadgets. You know that. We're not selling them or anything like that, Jesse Guy. said, try these out. They're really good. Yes, I used to put something like that on when I was playing cricket at school. <laughs> anyway, what it does, I'm going to get this like this. It's got two finger holes. Okay, you put, as I see it, your small finger through here. You put your other index finger through there. Okay, like that. You can see what it's like. I'll tell you what it's like. When I do my wrist all the time, I have to have a, you know, a support, like a surgical wrist support there. Um, to help, and it's very similar to that. It got, as I see, it goes around here, around the back, and it goes on there. In fact, if I was wearing that, I know my wife would say, "What have you done to your wrist again?" Don't answer that, guys. Don't answer that. It's my left hand. Okay, there it is, like that. And you think, how can that have anything to do with the practicalities of fishing? That's what I thought. Until you see these little bits up here. One bit there. One bit there, I'll point them straight at you and you press. And that, as you can see, lights up. Pretty cool, eh? Pretty cool. Why would you want them lighting up? Well, how about if you were, say, freshwater fishing and you wanted minimal light, your margin fishing in close, and you just want a little bit of light to do that boily, just like this. Just to, just to rig it up, hair rig it, minimal light. You could have a head torch, but it might scan across the water and spook the fish that you're waiting all night for. So those are for, and that's why they're fingerless like that, just for baiting up, just to give you enough of a light for baiting up. I mean, it's, it's, it's something weird, isn't it? A light on your hand, just one little click. I guess it runs on something like watch batteries, I don't know. But there you can see it. Hopefully, I'm stretching as far as I can. I'm sure you guys can see it there, like that, so you can bait up. Something different. I don't believe they're expensive. Don't even know where you get them, but you check out all the internet. You'll find them there somewhere. There's only the name on it. <coughs> oh yeah, the name says On Off. That must be the maker. Just a little bit of fun, guys. Switch it off, Graham. Save that battery. And on the beach as well. Handy, you know. Very, very handy little thing. Unless you're wearing gloves and it's cold in the winter. Yes, that's true, Graham. Not so practical then. Right, second thing is, along the same lines, these little gizmos. Now, I don't use these on my rod top, but you can use them on the rod top. I think there are no directions or anything with it, but I think that they actually whip on there. Let me get the other camera, and I'll, I'll try and handhold it, and just put it there so we can watch it on that, because they're so small that you might not actually see what they do. Let's get the, get the other camera, bear with me. So they've got a little slidey part. So they slide apart like this, look, there. You can see that slides into that slot. So I'm assuming that these, because they've got a little curve on them there, I, I reckon what they do is they whip onto your rod top. You know, you can either tape them on or you can whip them onto your rod top. Then you cast out and then you put one of these on. It slots on like that. As you can see, you think, well, it's upside down. Well, no, because you'd be the rod top would be going up this way and you'd be looking from that way at the light at the bottom. So that's the way I'm suggesting it would go. And then to activate it, all you do is unscrew here. When they come new, they've got that piece of white paper in there, that stops the contact. So you've got to take the white paper out. Bear with me, I know I've got one here that I've tried it. Just something to help you watch that rod top rattle when you get a bite. That's a theory. Well, it's not a theory, it does work. Okay, so that one I've to already taken the paper out of, there. So as you screw that back together without the paper in there, it eventually when you screw it tight, will make the contact with the batteries. I think it's got three small batteries in there. I've already taken them out, good fun trying to get them. Now hold up, against my hand, a red light, so it's gonna be that way up. Now there's a sort of green one in there as well. And then obviously when you wanna save the battery, you just under, undo a couple of turns, not even a, look, it's, it's, it's either on, right there, or you just unscrew it 
and it comes off half a turn, something like that. But I would think you've got to remember to do this with it, to take it off when you cast, because that might, that might just, I don't know, could it guys? You might just get a piece of line around it and then it's good night Vienna to that, your rod top, the rings. The battery, the light, everything, I don't know. But it slots in there, you whip it on, it's just a little bit of fun, isn't it? Like a sort of thing you get in a Christmas cracker, I should think. <laughs> there you go, just thought it'd be different. I put it in like this, you can you can hopefully see it nice and bright. Okie doke. So next thing is a bit of a surprise, guys. This is my life, bits of paper, always bits of paper with stuff written down, job lists. Shocking, really. Right, this is a, it's going to be a shop for somebody. It's going to be a very, very big shop for somebody. If you are sitting there, a Mr. Lee Jenkins. There's going to be at least 20,000 people <laughs> who are going to go, I'm Lee Jenkins. No. We get about 20,000 a week on a good week, maybe 30 on a, on a good week. So in a week's time, 30,000 people will know that Mr. Lee Jenkins is having a shout out for the totally awesome fishing show. His good opposite number lady contacted us and said, please, he watches every episode. He originally comes from Wales. He's moved to Perth in Australia in 2001. And he used to fish I'm going to say this, apologies to all the Welsh, Gaveni and the Usk. So I guess, did you do a lot of trout fishing? Come on Lee, let us know, what did you do? That must be fly fishing, was that Usk? Is that sea trout down that way? I don't know. So shout out to Lee Jenkins, thanks for watching it. I know maybe you're down there below us in Oz and you're hitting that button hundreds of times. Brilliant, it gives us more views. We've got quite a few people in Australia. Good luck to your cobbles over there. We've got some English guys over there as well. And they love it. Listen, I hope you guys don't get all those fires I've been seeing about this year. That's going to be a bit of a pain, I must admit. You guys over there have got the same as we got up here, but the opposite side of the planet. You can't say it's not global warming. You're getting more fires than anywhere else, aren't you? you know? California, more fires than they've ever had before. There's other parts of the world floods, everything, it's just weird, isn't it? And the main thing is, it's messing up the fishing. It definitely is messing the fishing up. A lot of species we've got here, they're all over the place. I mean, look, if you're going to freshwater and you're in a lake, in a pond and lake, they're all stuffed in there, no problem, you know they're in there. But even then, sometimes they get a bit touchy, high pressure, low pressure, it's weird out there. Anyway, Lee Jenkins, you've had your shout out. Hopefully, if anybody else wants a shout out, I'm going to say this, if you get in touch with Mike, I'll see if I can give you a shout out. I don't promise anything, it's a tackle shout. Tackle shout? A tackle shout? We could call it that. In the tackle shack, you can have a tackle shout. I'm not getting further than that, there's too many shh in there. It could come out as a tackle shh, shh something else. Guys, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit that, sub that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know when they come out. Because at the moment, I've been cracking out three films a week. It won't last. Other things to do as well, especially that pond. Hit Mike's one, TA Outdoors, got some big numbers on there. Look, it's all free to watch, guys. We put them together. There's only me and Mike, it's just a father and son doing it. Get all the support we can. We'll see you next time. It could be out on the boat, the bank, it could be in the tackle shack, it could be working as well. Mm. See you around, guys. I'm going off to play with my little lights. Ah, look a little lie, why? Ah. <laughs>